Noelle the Mortal Fate is an excellent example of how RPG Maker can be used for interesting and varied gameplay. I've mentioned this before in other reviews, but the software isn't bound to only creating RPGs, allowing, for instance, a unique adventure game be created. Keep in mind that this series is still ongoing, with only 7 chapters of the base version available on Steam. The Japanese version is up to Season 11. Each chapter is short, usually taking around 2-4 to four hours to finish. So now let's get into the review. Noelle, the mortal fate tells the story of Noelle, a rich girl who dedicated much of her life to become a famous pianist like her parents. However, that dream is crushed during the yearly competition organized by the city that she lives in. After feeling humiliated, a series of circumstances brings her to break the taboo and make a deal with the great devil. I'll try to avoid spoilers, but the pact doesn't go as well as she hoped for as she is tricked into a situation that forces her to lose her limbs. As she hits rock bottom, Noelle takes a new path of revenge against those who took everything she had. Alongside her is the devil named Karan. The story is all about this 15 year old that comes to terms with her circumstances and finds it within herself to focus on revenge. The writing can be a little immature for some plot points falling apart in several instances. Logic aside, Noelle the Mortal Fade knows how to make the emotional aspects hit. It's the kind of melodramatic train wreck that understands how to make revenge compelling without bothering to make it reasonable or realistic as far as the world with devils can go. The narrative focuses on character development as Noelle, Karan, enemies, and potential allies all have to deal with their circumstances. Seeing them evolve and getting to understand them better is a big motivation, but so are the explosive endings that close a battle of the season conflict while always offering a bombastic twist that kept me wishing to see what's coming next. Gameplay-wise, Noelle, Charon, and other playable characters have to make their way through various areas. To progress, they must complete light puzzles, stealth sequences, and direct combat. A specific chapter is even dedicated to a casino, with different kinds of interactions related to playing, cheating, and extortion. Battles against the opponents usually work with a bump system similar to the first East game, which means contact with an enemy is a way to cause damage. It's also the way to take damage, so hitting them from behind is a little smarter. Karan is the only one to usually do it, having to protect Noelle from the brute force of her enemies. Karan can equip specific stances to deal with these situations. They change his HP and attack parameters and can also affect other things. For instance, one pattern has a chance to not take damage when battling an enemy from the front, while another has a bigger knockback. When a situation would be better played with a specific one, the game mentions what kind of stance would have been better. However, there are also other circumstances for battle. At some points, the player may have to click on the screen to deflect multiple attacks. There are also boss battles for each chapter, and they all have some sort of gimmick. Usually, the player has to wait for an opportunity before hitting the bosses, but the specifics make them feel different. Exploration also occasionally revolves around some powers as Karan often needs to use his chains to move upwards and drag Noel with him. The areas that offer some sort of challenge to the player are evaluated with a reward and P points, which the player can use to buy recovery items. Not being seen during stealth segments or using the right answers when talking to a guard can result in more points. Noelle the Mortal Fate also has a reasonably good soundtrack. As the story is a rather emotion-driven revenge plot, the music represents the character's feelings. On the other hand, the visuals are a little mixed. The spywork has a spatial sense that makes it look slightly 3D-ish, but it also looks really blurry. Facial expressions lack definition with uncolored eyes, and the body lines feel like a bad HD filter applied over amateur sprites. The portraits and CGs compensate for this lacking sprite work. During conversations, the characters have detailed portraits showing how they actually should look and they are very expressive with a nice variety of poses. The CGs complete big twists as well, making them feel more impactful along with the soundtrack. The best part is how they use specific colors to represent characters instead of going for what they should look like. Noelle the Mortal Fate is all about impact. It's a revenge melodrama that wants to keep the player on the edge of their seat, eating all the plot twists and caring about how the characters end up. This may not be the whole story, but it still manages to provide a wildly emotional ride even through limited visuals. Noisy Pixel is giving Noelle the Mortal Fate Season 1 through 7 an 8.5 out of 10. Thank you for watching. Please read the full review at NoisyPixel.net. Noisy Pixel is run by a group of gamers who work hard to deliver news, reviews, previews, and more. Please subscribe to keep up with all our future content.